Hi, my name is... <laughs> so the journey of Amanda has been quite complicated. She was in, she took over with the sneak attack, and she got bounced out kind of inadvertently. Now she's coming back for some serious vengeance. She's making it personal. She's off her meds now. <laughs> That's my new thing. I think she's been a lithium this whole time to keep the, or the, the orbs out of her face. <laughs> well, I think we were most surprised to learn that she kind of was in love last season, and it wasn't obvious to everybody until it came out. And we're like, oh, she's had this grand affair going on at her nose. <laughs> How did she keep that a secret? You know, it's a it's a good question. I mean, I think this show is a very good uh, human. Everything's a duality. And nothing is what it seems. Everything's a puzzle wrapped in an enigma and a mystery. And, uh, I, yes, um, I think this season three we're going to see a much, if you can say it, a much less sympathetic Amanda. Last season, we really did kind of peel back the layers and show um, that, that she really was a human. Whether or not the audience, some audience members may have liked that, maybe may have not, but it was a good, at least we saw some empathy when it came, and maybe some real uh, feelings and an attachment to Alex and, and the past relationship with, with Nikita, which ultimately was the one that, that was probably the closest mother-daughter relationship she ever had and probably the closest thing to love she ever had. And, and even some real true feelings when it came to Percy. But a lot of it wasn't exactly what the people assumed, in my opinion. Um, but that being said, I, I hope we don't ignore all of the things that we explored in season two and season three. And the fact that um, She's going to, you can see that at the at the end of season two, Nikita's going to as, to a much more positive, probably positive, healthier place, and, and Amanda is going to a deeper, darker place, and, um, and ultimately has revenge on her mind. I'm sure she's going to be obsessively one-minded about getting Nikita, and trying to get the vision back. Although I'm not sure why she would want to, but... You know. Does she feel sort of betrayed by... Betrayal, betrayal is the word that defines Amanda right now because I think it started, um, of course, with uh, with Percy in season one. Um, I, I don't forget Percy stayed alive, in my opinion, because Amanda kept him alive. He was captured and he was going down, but he was she was he was kept alive because Amanda kept him alive because I think she ultimately always saw them as this power couple that. Um, could take on the world, whereas Percy became so, his, his psychotic ego took him to such a different level that he left her behind. So when he went off to, to, to with his master plan that didn't include her, and she was forced to capture him and then keep him in the silo, and it, it I, you know, it's, it's, it, she keeps talking about killing him. Well, she doesn't want to kill him. She never wanted to kill him. In fact, she says, you know, why did you, basically, you screwed it up. So, he screwed it all, he screwed it all up. He screwed our, our whole, our whole, um, our future together. And we were a power couple. And he, and, but he's become so dismissive of her that and he truly does betray her that she's forced to kill him. And she didn't, she was, and that's why it was almost very touching when she's about to inject him and put him into this coma. And then it took so long and, and, and it's just that, and, and, and she had tears and, and she was breaking down because of Percy's betrayal. And then of course, then you find out that, that, that Nikita ultimately betrayed her and they had a true close thing to a mother-daughter relationship that she ever had. And, and then she was kind of substituting that a bit with Alex, although I had the, I had the theory that Amanda was on to Alex from the very beginning and just loved playing the game. Like this thing is a big whole survivor game, you know, and if, if Division burned down, Amanda would be going, ha, 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 I got the million dollars, you know. <laughs> so, um, but going back to the Ari thing, I now I'm questioning, I, I approach it as if it was a real relationship with love and affection, but now I'm not so sure because at the end of the, at the end, it's almost like screwed up too, buddy. Like, maybe, who knows? 
We'll see. I, I would like to see what happens with that relationship because who else does she have? The whole world's after her, right? Do you think she's actually capable of love? In her own messed up, you know, I, mean, I think human beings, she's still a human being, so it's, of course. Because she seems to view it and utilize it like it's a tool. Like love is something, it's just a way to get what you want, and it's not a real emotion for her time. It's it's something that's always been a little bit challenging on the show because the very first meeting before we went into the first season like I had with Craig and the writers, Craig specifically said, honestly, I don't know what to tell you yet because we're going to keep her a mystery, we're going to keep her enigmatic. We haven't made any decisions because as soon as I do, then i got to do it and I don't know what to do yet. So the first season was very much a... It's almost good that he, I was told nothing, so it was very, everything was in control, it's all very, and it was, it came up very mysterious, and then as you start peeling back the layers in the second season, she probably got to a level that a lot of people never expected, we saw a little bit of that, and, and, and I don't even know if they expected the silo scenes to be as entertaining as they were, basically a whole season of him being in that room, and, and, and I'm always proud of saying I don't think we blocked it, I think we blocked it differently every single time we were in that, every single episode, it was never the same, and, and Xander and I would come up with different, um, different blocking and, and, and ways to make it interesting. And, and it, and it was. They were some. They were very insightful. It was a way to peel back instead of just doing the division technical babble. It was a way to peel back and reveal these characters. And now the audience is really invested in those characters. Now that first season is gone, um, said, do you think that Amanda is going to approach that? Is she going to be upset about that? Or well, that's the thing that I, I was pointing. I was. I was uh, talking about earlier is that I don't want to ignore the fact that it's one thing if I kill Percy, but Nikita, you killing Percy? Uh-uh. <laughs> you are going to pay. <laughs> um, I think it, it's, uh, it, I don't, I really hope we uh, address how she feels about that. We didn't get to see that. I mean, he, had, he hadn't died in the last, wait, he had, well, we, she didn't know that he passed in the last episode. But, uh, I don't think you're going to see tears, but I think, uh, I think you're going to see a very interesting, it'll be, it'll, I think you'll see a very interesting Amanda. I think we're going to have to assume that she's been, she's rogue now, she's hiding in plain sight, she's been hiding, she's got the world and the, the entire U.S. government after her. So, uh, it'll be interesting to know or see how she looks. <laughs> or, what's, or, you know, or, or what she's been doing for the past few months. I, I still don't know yet, so. Are you, are you ready to wear a lot of wigs? That's what I was thinking. I was thinking, like, she's, she's like, she becomes that, you know, master of disguise. Wouldn't that be cool? <laughs> Wouldn't that be cool? If it's like the opening of Mission Impossible and it's like one guy and then she goes, I'm going to write these things down. <laughs> Trust me. Because, like I said, they, you know, the writers are so, they're so fantastic. And, but if you throw some ideas out to them, they embrace it. And, and that's what's great about it. Television is you. It's not. It's not a film that you write and rewrite and rewrite and, and shoot for three months and you're done. It's the longevity of a show, the potential for a show to go three, four, five, six, seven, eight years, and they have to come up with things that are that are. Uh, and some sometimes the fourth season is the best season. You know, it depends on. And it's all the writers. And it's a writer's medium, and and just so they're very open to our suggestions and the collaboration. The the scenes between Percy and I talking about. Or, oh, I, I know you thought this was a relationship, and then the way he spoke to me. That came out of a conversation that Xander and I were having, and the writer overheard us discussing. And then we got into a big discussion about their past and what we thought. So he ended up putting it in five months later, whoa, and there it is. So it's these writers, they really need to be inspired, and, and it's really great when we can give them that because they have so much to do with the technical story and about getting through, but when it comes to these little nuances, and, and um, it's, it's my job to inspire them and to do something that they've never seen.
I, I'm always trying to inject humor, but not for ha ha sake, but you know, by you know, checking her hair while she's dying or doing, you know, whatever. <laughs> Something to be under the table. Do you think she had a contingency plan, some place she could like take to ground when these things kind of fell apart for her? I think that's the thing. Of, there's this shows all. I I think you should always assume chess moves are being made off the board before, I mean, without anything being seen. Whatever you're not seeing, stuff's going on. Just like the world around us right now, stuff's going on. Um, and contingency plans, absolutely. She's or it, it just when her last contingency plan might fail, something she's got some, something else in mind. I'm a fan too, so I can't wait to see what she's been doing. Work in the street? <laughs> Who knows? Are you going to be in every, in every episode? I will not be in every episode. No. It's, um, I think, I think um, correctly so and creatively, they really want to. It's, it's difficult to focus on one bad guy for an entire season. And I think uh, we're going to, I think they're going to absolutely, they're going to explore other bad guys that are in the world because there's a lot there's a lot of monsters out there apparently. Will she be hooking up though with uh, this last sort of bad guy network? Pardon? Will she be kind of hooking up with the bad guy network maybe? The to, bad guy network? I mean, <laughs> trying to get her revenge by hire, sort of hiring other people or teaming up? I, you know it would be interesting to see if she can she's if she can recruit her own crew to the, the wicked witch of the west maybe the east. I'll get you my pretty. <laughs> I mean yeah she's right. She can have her little flock of flying monkeys. 